This video is proudly brought to you by Hovertech. Hovertech. Just a button away. In this video tutorial, I'll be discussing how to use SP Flash Tool. Now, for you to use SP Flash Tool, you of course need your SP Flash Tool. I'll be using version 3 and 5. Now, they are basically the same thing, but some people tend to get confused using them and they also have some you know, distinct differences. So, I'll be using both versions so it's clear for whichever one you are going to be using. You also need your VCOM drivers, which is your USB VCOM driver. Now, you might have noticed that when trying to flash using SP Flash to the SP Flash to my just remain at 0%, no flashing, nothing happening. That's because you don't have the VCOM drivers. Now, there's already a video on that. I already created a video on that, so you can check the video tutorial. But just to make it clearer for everybody, I will be going through the process of installing the VCOM drivers all over again in this tutorial, so you get it from start to finish. Now, you do also need VCOM drivers, so just check the description of this tutorial, you should get the download link, or you go to our website, search for how to use SP Flash Tool, you should find the written version of this video tutorial, and you can get the links to all this software you'll be needing. And of course, you need the files you'll be flashing which is my stock backup in this case i'm using a, an old os techno m3 now i also have my techno m3 here with me and i've clicked this phone just for the purpose of this tutorial so i'll be flashing the files to this my techno m3 here and i have my usb cord right here so these are the things you would basically need for this tutorial now i'll briefly touch the content of the stock backup now this as you see here is not the complete backup this is just a files to flash this is just a collection of the essential files you'll be needing for sp flash tool now most people tend to think all you need for sp flash is your scatter file the scatter file here is just a it's just like a map it's a key it's what tells sp flash to the partition table of your phone and tells you where to flash what file so it's just a key so you you can't exactly use sp flash tool with a scatter file only scatter file is just one out of the several components you would need so but scatter file is a very important tool it acts as your key to using sp flash tool so that's a scatter file there and also you'd have to have the file you wish to flash in the case you need to flash just one file you need your scatter file and just that one file in the case you need to flash many files this scatter file and all the files you need so basically a scatter file is just like the key to flash and you need other files this scatter file will be helping you to flash so since we have all this i will proceed now the first thing you want to do of course as i promised you i will take you through the installation of your vcom driver now, i already have my vcom driver extracted all right this is my usb vcom driver here all right now if you look here all i have is windows 7 and i'm using a windows 8 pc but since windows 7 and windows 8 are you know very very close in driver usage on the drivers they need i can safely install my windows 7 drivers on my windows 8 so we have the drivers ready so now the first thing you want to do before you talk about using sp flash tool at all is to install the drivers now for sp flash you don't need an internet connection so don't worry about internet connection everything can be done offline so installing the drivers the first thing you want to do is open device manager so i will search for device manager here all right here's my device manager now what we are basically going to be doing here is we are going to be manually installing this vcom driver you know there's a automatic method of installing it where you use an installer but we are going to be manually installing it just in case you don't have access to the automatic installer so the first thing you want to do here is just click anything you know, just click any item on the list any item at all on the list so once you click an item you go to action then you go to scan for sorry add legacy hardware click on add legacy hardware then from here a wizard will pop up 
next to from where you click next now before you go proceed at this point lest i forget if you're using a windows 8 pc it's very important to disable driver signature verification now there's a video on that i created a video on that you can also check our website for how to disable windows driver signature verification because if you don't disable that you will not be able to install an unsigned driver now this driver i'm trying to install is unsigned it doesn't mean it's not going to work it doesn't mean it's dangerous or something it's just not signed now you understand so basically windows it just believes that any unsigned driver must be unsafe so it doesn't allow you to go ahead to install that so you need to first disable signature verification if you're using windows 8 before you proceed with this check my list of previously uploaded tutorials or video tutorials or you go to our website for how to disable signature verification on your windows 8 so from here you click install the hardware that i'm already select from a list then next you just click next here now at this point you click have disk now here i'm going to choose the driver i wish to i wish to install so i just go straight to my over tech folder i my vcom drivers usb vcom don't forget windows 7 since i don't have windows 8 windows 8 and 7 are closed as i like mentioned so i can use windows 7 now my pc is a 64 bit pc so i just select 64 bit now for those who don't know how to check if there is 34 30, 32 or 64 bit quickly just go to my computer right click on it click on properties and you see your pc mine is this 64 bit system type 64 bits here it is all right so that's how you just check it right click on my computer properties and that is it all right let's proceed with the solution of driver so from here i've selected i've loaded the driver i wish to select let me do that again just in case you've forgotten go straight to where the folder is you select that for your pc mine is 64 bits if you have a 32 bits select this instead so my 64 bit i select and then open and then okay now that this is the one that i mentioned this driver is not digitally signed but this is not really this is nothing to worry about you just have to proceed and then you click next and next so we are installing this now this is finished now if after the installation that like assuming you disable the signal verification you're able to get to this stage now you would get this you know this device cannot start code 10. most people tend to panic at this point this is really nothing to panic about now what this the reason why you're getting this code 10 basically is because you installed an unsigned driver now when, when you install an unsigned driver in windows 8 windows 8 tends to assume it's it might not work now notice it's you know, notice my language i said it might not work doesn't mean it will not work it might not work because it's unsigned so the only reason why you're getting this error is because the driver you installed is unsigned and that doesn't mean it's not going to work and i can guarantee you that it is most likely going to work as far as you install the correct drivers which it which it is in this case so despite the fact that i'm getting my device cannot start with 10 error it's nothing to worry about it's just because the driver is unsigned so i just click finish so my driver is installed now to cross check if my driver is installed see under my device manager i scroll down and i see my mediatek the usb vcom port and my mediatek preloader usb vcom so yes i have it installed now this yellow triangle is just is related to the quote error i earlier mentioned there's nothing to worry about it's just because it's unsigned that is all it is this is for spectrum here but well, we are basically focusing on the mtk which are these here so my vcom drivers are installed and i am good to go now straight to sp flash tool now i'll be using sp flash tool version 3 first so i open the version 3 folder now what you want to do to use this is you right click on sp flash tool I run as administrator then the reason why i'm running as admin click yes to confirm now the reason why i'm running, running as admin is just to avoid you know permission issues when using sp flash to, you know sometimes if you're not running as admin you might not be able to run certain files or 
use certain system resources you know things like that basically but you should be able to use it in normal mode if you're not the admin but if you can run as admin it's just better run as admin so now in sp flash 2 there is basically no setting you need to run what you just need to do is to load your scatter file now i'm using version 3 first i'll repeat the same procedure for version 5 so i click on scatter loading now in this window that pops up what you want to do is to go to where you have your files which you want to flash now remember mine is the stock backup for this so i i select my scatter file here and i click open now i'm getting error initializing error uh, error initializing scatter file failed please check the name of the scatter file which you load is legal now the reason why i'm getting this error is because the version of sp flash tool i'm using is too low for the kind of backup i have you understand so for me to be able to use sp flash tool I need to use version 5 that's what this is telling me so basically i i i cannot use version 3 to flash this phone which i'm using i have to move to version 5 but i still want to show you what version 3 is going to look like so let me just look for another file which version 3 should be able to at least list for you even if you are not flashing i need you to at least see a list okay Techno D3 should be able to at least have okay. All right, so this is basically what version 3 is going to look like. That is, if you if it's going to be compatible with your phone, this is what version 3 looks like. So it's it's going to be the same thing as us using version 5. Just take note of where the following things are format, firmware upgrade, download. These are just the basic things you just need to take note of. I'll still explain. I'll explain these things in version five, but it's the basically the same thing. There's also read back for you to back up your phone, but that is not that is beyond the scope of this. There's a video on how to back up your a working phone using SP Flash Two. You can check out video tutorial on our website. Now, but basically this is what your version three is going to look like. Now you would see this part in red, your preloader in red, and your DSPBL. DSP underscore BN in red. Now, what is the reason why these two are in red is just like a warning. It's more like telling you do not flash these files unless you really need to or unless you're really sure of what you are doing. As I earlier mentioned, preloader.bin and DSPBL are basically your preloader files. They help your phone to even show a sign of life. So, if you really, really do not need to flash these files, do not flash them. If your phone is not totally dead, do not flash them but if your phone has a sign of life ignore this if, if, if your phone is totally dead then you can go ahead to flash them that it has a sign of life but if it has a sign of life it can respond to power button or it can just show a sign of life at least do not flash without it being unless you flash a wrong one mistakenly or something but just do not flash this at will so you see that the rest are ticked. We have you boot ticked, boot tick, recovery tick, and the rest. Now you see that some are ticked and some are not ticked. Like this is not ticked. Now the reason why some will be ticked and some will not be ticked is because they are not present in that particular stock backup which you have. So what that basically means that if you load a scatter file from a folder containing your stock ROM and a particular file is not there in that same directory where the scatter file is. It will not appear here the, when i load this scatter file here the only files is going to see are all these files here any file that is outside this folder this scatter file will not see it in sp flash 2. so that that explains why cache is not ticked because if cache was in the same folder as the scatter file was it will also be ticked as all these others are ticked but because it's not ticked that means it's not present there but of course there's a way for you to manually load a file in a case where maybe it's not appearing here for one reason or the other maybe because it's in a different location or somewhere it's just not loading there's a way you can manually load a file now for you to manually load a file i will assume let's say my boot.img was not ticked for example my boot.img was not ticked i'm using d3 in this case for me to manually load my boot.img all i have to do is just tick 
Google.img. That's assuming it was not ticked when I loaded this scatter file. All you have to do is just tick the item that was not automatically loaded. Then you double click it. Now I need to I need to make you see something. Now if you look at Kache here now, you see that Kache is not ticked. It has this this front part is empty. That shows you that there is no file linked to your Kache. But because boot has a file linked to it, you see this here. So I'm going to assume that boot.ing is also empty, you know, as Kache. So for you to manually load it, you tick the item that was not automatically loaded. Then you double click this name. For version 3, that is how you manually load. But for version 5, this is where you click. For version 5, you click here. This field here, you click this. Just in case I forget to mention that version 5. For version 5, to, to automatically load a, to manually load a file, you double click this place. For version 3, you double click the name. So I double click the name of boot.ing. Then what I have to do is go to the boot image. This is my boot image. I select and then open. So automatically a path is going to appear here. You are going to see a path. Then that means my boot is now loaded. So that's how basically how to manually load a file. So once you have your files loaded and you are ready to go, all you have to do is just click your download or firmware upgrade, whatever you are doing. Now if you when, when you click download. Alright, you use download when you are flashing not all the files, you know, just a selection of them, not everything. You understand? If I'm going to flash this now, I need to use download. I cannot use firmware upgrade because download allows me to flash files when everything is not selected. But firmware upgrade requires that everything on that list be selected. Now, there's a way you can actually modify your scatter file to make everything get you know, selected, but I would not be going through that. You can just Google how to just go, just go to our website, search for how to modify a scatter file, and you can see a, you can see a guide on that. So I will not be going into that. There's also, a, there's also a video on that. You can check our channel on a video on how to modify a scatter file. So I will not be going to that. So for you to use firmware upgrade, everything here has to be ticked. When everything here is ticked and they all have files you know attached to them here. You can go ahead with firmware upgrade, but because not everything is ticked, all I can use is a download. I will not be using version five to version three, sorry, because I don't have a technical D3 here. What I have is an M3. Unless I forget, it's very important you don't flash files from one phone model to another. You don't flash technical D3 files to an M3 just because they have three in the names. As far as it's not D3, you have no business flashing the files unless they are very, very close. But basically, if you are not sure how close they are, you know. If you are not sure of how close the chipsets are, it's best to just flash files from one file to only that file to be on the safe side. So I'll not be using version 3, I will close version 3. So basically you already have an idea of how the interface of version 3 works. All I have to do after loading the files, I click my download on my firmware upgrade depending on which you are going to be using. And then once that starts, once I click my download, it will give me this not all images are correctly loaded as I as I mentioned, which may cause boot up issue. Do you still want to go on downloading anyway? Of course, you click yes. It's nothing to worry about. Since you're not downloading all files, it's just warning you that you might not be you might not have some essential files which you might need. So do you still want to proceed? Of course, you want to proceed. So at this point now, stop is going to be in red and every other thing will be grayed out. So what you need to do now is to just remove the battery from your phone. That as you are using version two, remove the battery from your phone. And slot it back in without booting the phone so I have my phone switched off with battery in so you then connect the phone to the PC via your USB cord and once connect via USB cord flashing should begin so that's the version 3 but I will not be using that live here because version 2 doesn't support the M3 which I have here I'll be using version 5 for that very tutorial so that will be that for version 3 I click stop all right now version 5 this is what i'll be using to flash i run as administrator version 5 yes now one thing you should know about version 5 is that it could you know take some time to load don't worry about this this is just a normal error at least at the initial stage Version 5 takes some you know some time to load, so it's very important to be patient with it. And one thing about SP Flash Tool is that you do not interrupt SP Flash Tool. 
once it starts flashing it's best to leave it till it finishes the flashing if you interrupt it in the middle of flashing or read back the phone is just going to go dead as in totally dead no light no power zero dead now when that happens if you accidentally interrupt sp flash to it's nothing to panic about what you basically need to do is take out the battery and slot it back in and keep charging the phone if you don't have if the battery is not removable just connect the phone to a power source and keep charging just keep charging keep charging and just keep charging the phone will eventually come up all right so we'll be using version 5 of sp flash 2 and this is basically I'll, I'll just quickly take you through what version 5 really does you know the function you have in version 5 and how to use them to flash your phone okay in version 5 the first thing you want to do is to load the scatter file so i click scatter loading it opens the locate, locate the stock backup and you select the scatter file and then open all right so you can see that not all items are ticked i have my car changes that are not ticked now i already explained the reason why they are not ticked besides these two files are very optional files so the phone will work fine whether or not you flash them so you don't really need to flash them so what you basically need to do at this point now is to decide whether you want to format first or you want to download or you want to do a firmware upgrade i already mentioned the do not flash below that at any point if you don't need it do not bother flashing it but you can decide to flash or not if you want now for you to select the file you wish to flash all you have to make sure is that the file is ticked so what that means that if i proceed with flashing all these files will be flashed if i want to exclude a particular file all i have to do is untick that file all right so if i proceed with flashing at this point all that will be flashed are uboot boot.img and recovery image all right but if you want to tick if you want to flash more files you can tick but it's very important that you do not tick files that don't have a path in front of them as you can see all these files that are ticked have paths in front of them that means they are actually linked to specific files so if you go ticking these two files for example like try to flash you'll get an error because they don't have any files linked to them they have no path so we do not tick them so in the case where you really need to flash a file and the file is not appearing here for any reason or the other and you do have that file in the backup what you need to do is to manually load and for version 5 to manually load your file all you have to do is just tick the file so i'll assume maybe my recovery was not loaded despite me having a recovery.img in the same folder as the scatter file so i'll just tick my recovery then you double click it will pop up a window all you have to do is select the recovery image and open so the recovery image will now have a path so you basically allow to manually load a file in a case where the file does not appear loaded as in the case of catch and user data so at this point now i, I proceed you could, you could decide to format but i i advise you to only format when you really need to as I earlier mentioned so if you want to proceed with formatting anyway all you need to do is to disconnect the phone from your pc at this point all right select auto format flash and format whole flash except bootloader just select these two options and then you click start so now stop is going to be in green so what you just need to do at this point is take out the battery from the phone put the battery back in without switching on the phone so the, ba the phone is off with the battery in so you just connect the phone to the PC via USB cord and watch the formatting process. Once formatting is done, you get a green box saying OK. And you will notice of course after formatting your phone will be dead. No power, no no sign, no, no sign of life, nothing. Now don't panic. The reason why your phone is dead is because you formatted the phone without replacing it with any OS. So obviously your phone is going to remain dead. For you to bring your phone back to life, you need to form, you need to flash the complete backup to it. Especially, it needs to continue prior to green for you to be able to bring back your phone again. So, I advise you only format when you need to, and when you have the necessary files to revive the phone after formatting. If you don't have the files, do not format. So, I will not be formatting here. I will just be downloading. Now, you have the option of download only, format 
you have the option of format all we'll be looking at three options format all plus download firmware upgrade and download only now the format all plus download is going to do a format first before it downloads all right in which case all items will need to be ticked of course in most cases for the firmware upgrade all items need to be ticked so we cannot use this option in this case because catcher and data are not ticked so we can't do a firmware upgrade all we can do is a download all right so for this case we we'll select download but if you really need to do a firmware upgrade that means if you have all the files and wish to flash everything and all items are ticked here all you have to do is select firmware upgrade from here and then click download you can see all files are automatically ticked but because these two don't have a path this is going to fail so it's best to just stick to download only all right so now i'm going to use download only what you need to do next is make sure your phone is not connected to the pc and it is switched off with battery in so just click download now to save time i will not be flashing all files i'll be flashing only the boot image but it's going to be the same procedure of course as if you are flashing everything just take a longer time to flash so for example i'll be flashing boot.img but if you want to flash any file at all all you have to do is tick that particular file to flash but just to make it fast i will be flashing only boot.img so once i have my boot.img selected it is ticked and it has a path all i do is click download now stop is going to be in red what i'm expected to do now is my phone my, i've removed the battery i've put it back in the phone is switched off still with the battery inside all i'm going to do now is to just connect the phone to the pc via usb cord and fashion should begin now it's very important to give this time just because it's staying this way doesn't mean nothing is happening i'm having not responding it's very important you do not try to disconnect because if you disconnect at this point it's just going to go totally dead in which case you have to keep charging and charging and charging and charging to do anything all right so once flashing is successful you are going to get the prompt to confirm that okay i have a download okay in my case so my flashing was successful so i'm going to flash something that will take longer let me let me flash something that will take longer so you see a download so you see a, you see the loading process but if if we intended to flash both boot and android you could just stick both of them and flash it once but i just want you to see the load process this time around so i'm going to be clicking download for my my version 5 seems to be acting up you know it gets that slow at times so it's important to your you know, patient with it do not rush it do not interrupt it so the reason why i'm going with android this time around is because i want you to see the loading process all right so i'm going to connect the phone to the pc now and watch download begin all right so it is flashing so for the boot.ng i flash is because the file is so light and everything does happen within a few seconds and it looks like nothing really happened you know but this is the system that imb this is going close to 300 megabytes if not 400 megabytes in size so that of course takes a longer time to flash so now we are seeing the flashing procedure so during this point at this point do not disconnect do not interrupt just let it flash if you mistakenly interrupt or if it just gets interrupted at this point and your phone goes dead do not panic just keep charging and charging and charging uninstall vcom drivers reinstall remove the battery the removable slot it back in and just keep charging and charging and eventually the phone is going to come up and you'll be able to flash again so we just wait for this flashing procedure to finish so we are waiting for flashing um sp flash also has the read back function which is this read back 
what the read back basically does is allows you to you know back up your to extract the rom or extract to back up your phone using sp flash too yeah so i did a video tutorial at the website also a youtube video on that you can check those out for you to know the procedure of backing up using sp flash too and it has a memory test also what this does basically is to tell you what how your phone is doing if it has a crashed land and you know if it has a crashed emmc you know if you're able to recognize your phone you know basically things like that it just basically tells you how your phone is doing for flashing so that's about that first so once this is done i expect to get my green okay now sometimes when people flash, you have to flash so the phone doesn't come up, it just remains like that. You have to make sure that your, your battery is actually well charged. So after flashing, you move the battery, that's if it's well charged, you move the battery, slot it back in, then put into recovery mode and do a factory reset if the phone doesn't boot up normally after you've done the flashing. And it's also important to have a working SD card in the phone because sometimes the phone would not work properly because there's no memory card in the phone. So just try to make sure there's a memory card in the phone while you're flashing the next flash tool and after it's flash tool flashing you boot into recovery mode you do a factory reset and then you boot your phone give it some time and you're good to go all right so flashing is complete and i have a do no case sign so my phone is going to come up i move my battery slot it back in and boot and don't forget that if your phone is still stuck at logo after flashing and you're sure you flash the correct file just Boot into recovery mode, do a factory reset, and then you have a formatted and working memory card in the phone. So basically, that is just how to use SP Flash Tool. So I just go ahead and close this.